Live from WTPO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 10 starts now. An 815 weekend event draws residents in for free food and games, but also provides resources to help teens and young adults in the Forest City. We'll give you a list of the other 815 weekend festivities planned. What is important that they're being equipped when they walk into a classroom. A local church helps Forest City students make sure their backpacks are full before heading back to school. Yeah, it's actually really fun. I'm, I can't wait for next year to do it. Participants get down and seriously dirty at the Tough Mudder Obstacle Course. We'll show you more coming up. Good evening, I'm Alexis Carpello. First responders are sent to a crash at the Boone County Fairgrounds. It happened at the main entrance of the fair. This is what the scene looked like when our crews got there. Police were redirecting traffic. We'll update you with details on this crash once we know more. Over 300 people are dead and approximately 1,500 injured after a powerful earthquake rocked Haiti Saturday morning. The epicenter in the southwestern portion of the island. Numerous buildings have collapsed and residents are buried under the rubble. Here's ABC's Faith Abube with the details. Haiti in a state of emergency after a powerful earthquake rocked the country Saturday morning. The 7.2 magnitude quake was followed by a series of aftershocks. The tremors felt as far away as Cuba and Jamaica. A tsunami warning was issued initially but was lifted a short time later. The U.S. Geological Survey reporting the epicenter was 78 miles west of Port-au-Prince. Images from the town of Le Caille, a coastal town in the south, showed a church badly damaged, a crack running through the center. Major devastation also reported in the town of Jeremy, not far from the epicenter. This disaster coming on the heels of last month's assassination of President Jovenel Moïse. The country's Prime Minister, Ariel Henry, already declaring a state of emergency. Government officials, relief agencies, and representatives from the United Nations Nations are assessing the damage. President Biden has authorized an immediate U.S. response, naming Samantha Power, the U.S. aid administrator, to coordinate the effort. And now Haiti is facing the threat of yet another natural disaster as Tropical Storm Grace heads towards the island. There are concerns Haiti could be facing the same level of devastation seen after an earthquake shattered the country 11 years ago, killing more than 200,000. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. A block party pulls in residents for good times, but also offers information for youth in the Forest City in need of some help. Life Decisions held a block party at Dalquist Park today. It was part of the 815 weekend. Organizers tell us their goal is to bring resources to the community, specifically targeting teens and young adults. A list of vendors were there like Workforce Connection, Goodwill, and Great Neighborhoods offering support. They had this vision to bring um, just resource vendors and community partners together. We're restoring Rockford by building a tribe of mentors. Attendees were also able to get a free lunch and enjoy games while at today's block party. 815 weekend events aren't stopping today. Sunday, festivities start as early as 8 a.m. and run through 8 at night. You can stop by the North End City Market and Culture Shock Clothing and Records Food Truck event for a bite to eat tomorrow. If you can't make it out, we'll be stopping at a few festivities, so we'll show you what's happening. Find the full list of 815 weekend events by using the My State Line app. Thousands of obstacle course junkies flock to Rockford's airport for the Tough Mudder competition. Participants were put to the test, some points having to work together to get through an obstacle. Here's a look at one part of the course. People had to scale both sides of this large obstacle. We spoke with a participant who was there for the first time. The yeah, atmosphere is amazing. If you haven't been out here, get out here. It's fun. Amazing people out here. Of course, if you do, you get free beer. So I know that's a lot of, like, a lot of, a lot of people like to do. The obstacle course isn't a race. You can do it at your own pace. A local church hosts a giveaway so that students don't have to head back to school with empty backpacks. A Ministry of Restoration church was giving out pencils, folders, scissors, and many other types of school supplies to kids today. The giveaway was at Blackhawk Park. Kids from preschool to college students were able to grab a bag full of supplies. Organizers say it's important that Forest City students have the proper tools for classrooms. But it's important that each grade is armed for that class. That's it. To be able to navigate, be able to coordinate, and have once again the tool that's needed. 
Church has been helping to provide school supplies to kids for over a decade. Rockford Public Schools hope to convince more students to roll up their sleeve for the COVID vaccine. The district announced it will hand out $100 gift cards to students 12 and up who get the shot. RBS 205 is using federal COVID relief funds to pay for the program. We told you about this on Friday. To be eligible, students must register with the Winnebago County Health Department, then attend a vaccine clinic next Wednesday or Thursday. Kids who have been already vaccinated will also get the reward. Finalists of vaccine clinic locations on mystateline.com. Friday, the Centers for Disease Control and the FDA officially approved a COVID-19 booster shot for millions of Americans with compromised immune systems. The FDA approval applies to about 2.7 million people. It includes patients being treated for cancer, HIV, and those who've gotten organ transplants. But that's just 3% of all immunocompromised Americans. So far, booster shots have not been okayed for traditionally healthy people, but Dr. Anthony Fauci says he expects that time will come at some point. Happening tomorrow in Beloit, Vets Roll is honoring the 76th anniversary of the end of World War II. It's a free event happening at the Eclipse Center. We'll have more on this anniversary tomorrow. In Chicago, the community held prayer vigils on Friday to honor Chicago police officer Ella French. Dana Rebeck shares those remembering her as a dedicated and brave officer. I'm telling you, our officers need support. Backing the blue, residents on the far south side came to show that support after the murder of Chicago police officer Ella French. Well, I'm a former police officer out of Markham, Illinois, and uh, I just, just for respect, this officer died for no reason. She didn't have to die. Officer French was shot and killed last Saturday near 63rd and Bell in West Inglewood. Her partner also critically wounded. Brothers Amante and Eric Morgan have been charged in the crime. Amante, the one accused of pulling the trigger. He was out of jail after a hit and run arrest in April and also on probation for robbery. As you know, it's a difficult time for us. I think uh, you've seen everybody here, you see the support we get. And you also see what our officers go through. Earlier today at police headquarters, there was a prayer vigil with interfaith leaders. But my condolences, my heart, my prayers go out to her parents, her family, and out to Chicago finest, the Chicago Police Department. Back at the 4th District, a bit of tension tonight as Alderwoman Susan Sadlowski Garza spoke. Please let us know. You guys, I can't tell you how to do your job. You do it very well. But anything that we can do to help as Alderman, please let us know because we want to help you. We want you to be safe too. Yeah, let them do their job. They're handcuffed. Police are handcuffed right now. All of them. I wouldn't be a cop for no, nothing in the world now. A community grieving, releasing balloons for this young officer who risked her life to protect others. We hurt just like everybody else. This is difficult for all of us. It's been one month since Texas House Democrats fled Texas to block two Republican-backed election bills from passing. The group has spent the last month on Capitol Hill lobbying Congress to pass a federal voting rights legislation. But as Anna Warnicke explains, it was actually a Texan who blocked that from happening. She's keeping you connected to the nation's capital. Good evening. Texas House Democrats plan to stay in Washington as long as Congress is here, hoping to motivate senators to pass the For the People Act. But when Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer brought it to the floor this week, Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz stepped in. So many times it's the smaller voices that are left out of the conversation. Texas State Representative Jasmine Crockett was one of the 50 Democrats who fled Texas to Washington to urge senators to pass a voting rights bill this summer. But this week, in just 15 minutes, those hopes were dashed by Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz. I object. Cruz repeatedly objected to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's attempt to pass the For the People Act, which would create national standards for voting rights. This bill would constitute a federal government takeover of elections, 
It would constitute a massive power grab by Democrats. Urging Congress to pass the For the People Act was a top reason Crockett and her Democratic colleagues came to Washington after fleeing Texas back in July to stop Republicans from enacting new voting restrictions. When we left, I'm sure my colleagues never saw that there would be a movement that would be started. But now, with no movement on a federal voting rights bill and with Congress back home for the summer, Crockett says she will keep fighting despite a warrant out for her arrest when she returns home. I mean, imagine the imagery of it when you have political opponents that go out and arrest their opponents for the purpose of passing voter suppression. Schumer is offering Texas Democrats some hope with promises to keep fighting for voting rights when the Senate returns next month. Schumer says the voting rights legislation will be the first matter of legislative business when the Senate returns to session in September. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. Back to you. Now, your first warm weather forecast with meteorologist Joey Marino. We had a perfect 10 out of 10 today. Temperatures upper 70s, low 80s, and wall to wall sunshine. High pressure keeping us dry as we head into the overnight hours. Taking a live look over beautiful downtown Rockford. Pretty quiet with just a few passing clouds. But once the sun set, temperatures were rapidly dropping already. We're down into the low 60s in a couple of spots, getting close to the upper 50s out in Freeport and Savannah. 68 up in Monroe. 64 in Rockford and 65 in both DeKalb and Rochelle. We remain not only uh, comfortable with our temperatures, but also dew points as we roll into the overnight hours. We're in the 50s in most spots, upper 50s for Freeport and Savannah, low 50s for Monroe, 52 right now in DeKalb. But pretty quiet on satellite and radar with high pressure in control of our atmosphere. There's a lot of dry air uh, higher up in the atmosphere. So nothing really uh, popping up as we get into the early overnight hours. You can kind to see on our radar there was like an attempt at a lake breeze front moving into uh, Rochelle and Rockford earlier uh, this afternoon but otherwise really nothing to be worried about we're going to stay quiet overnight thanks to this high pressure system that's locked over the Great Lakes region uh, it's going to keep us dry for 815 day and then as we head into the start of the work week. So taking a look at tonight, we're going to be dropping rapidly into the upper 50s by tomorrow morning. Mostly clear skies and that will lead to a pleasant start to 815 day. We're really going to just see a repeat of what we saw today for the end of the weekend, but we stay comfortable into next week. High pressure remains in control. It's really going to be slow moving to get out of the Great Lakes. So that's going to keep us dry into the start of next week. Rain chances also hold off. We'll see our next chance Tuesday, just keeping a slim chance for a shower or two. Uh, but otherwise, the best chance for rain is going to be Wednesday into Thursday. You can see the temperature trend. We stay in the 80s well into next week. We'll stay comfortable though tomorrow and then on Monday. But once we get a little more moisture to work its way, into the state line. It's going to feel more muggy by Tuesday and then humid again by the middle and second half of next week. And that's when we see our rain chances move in, especially Wednesday into Thursday. We're going to be watching as a cold front approaches the region by late in the week. It just depends on when it passes through. We're going to see that cool down as we head into the weekend, but that's what we need to keep an eye on as we get into the start of next week. So let's take a look at future casts. You can see that once we get into uh, tomorrow morning, we're going to start off 815 day with plenty of sunshine. Keep that sunshine into the afternoon, and because temperatures are going to be in the low 80s, humidity is going to be under control. It's going to be a fabulous day uh, for any uh, festivities that you have planned for 815 day. We stay quiet into tomorrow night, and we'll have mostly clear skies as we head into Monday. That's going to lead to another sun filled day across the state line as high pressure continues to keep us dry. 815 day starting off in the upper 50s, low 60s. We're going to top out in the low 80s by the afternoon. Winds are going to stay light, so a fabulous day ahead for the end of the the weekend that continues into the start of next week with rain chances increasing by Wednesday and Thursday. Back to you. Now the Napleton Sports Desk with David Greenberg. Today was the first glimpse of Justin Fields in the blue and orange as he played at a significant chunk of this afternoon's week one preseason opener. Plenty of Bears fans in attendance. He gave him a standing ovation in the second half. He did not disappoint. Start of the third, takes the snap, pressure comes, evades one man. Escaping to his left now. Finds some green grass inside the five and muscles his way into the end zone for his first score as a bear. That made it 13 to 10. Later in the third, just inside the 30 yard line, play action comes back to the left. Finds a wide open Jesse James, and that is his first passing touchdown as a bear. 14 for 20 with two scores in his first preseason outing as the Bears win 20 to 13.
that we want them to be the best quarterbacks they can be. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about next week. Don't worry about the future. Just worry about today. And I thought that Justin did a great job of worrying about today. And he played smart football. Um, he made plays. And then also that, that scramble for a touchdown, you know, the, you, you feel the vibe, you feel the energy. And it was, it was pretty cool. Jordan Love looked strong in his first outing as he went 12 of 17 with 122 passing yards and a touchdown. This one just went final. Unfortunately, due to NFL rules and regulations, we aren't allowed to show highlights until the broadcast is 100% off the air. So I'm unable to show you some of the highlights from tonight. But I'll have more on them tomorrow, so be sure to tune in then. Our high school two days continue tonight as we look at the Nick 10's finest, the Auburn Knights. Ahead of this upcoming high school football season, keep an eye on those Auburn Knights. It's really exciting to be out here, and I know uh, the kids really like it too. After playing just three games last season thanks to COVID, they're playing with a chip on their shoulder and are eager to prove their doubters wrong. I feel like people are sleeping on you guys? Yes, very much. Yeah, yeah. what do you have to say to that? You know, just, you know, we coming. That's all, we, we, we coming. That's all I gotta say. Seniors like linebacker Caleb Burnell and his twin brother Malachi, along with first team all conference defensive back DeQuavion Oaks, are a few key players on this squad that are looking to play shut down D this year. We, we have a pretty strong defense. You know, we have a, one of the best DBs in the Nick 10, uh, one of the best linebackers, and you know, we have a pretty strong D line, so we don't expect anybody to really score on us heavy this season. Mentally being ready to uh, play teams, you know, staying whole as a group. Uh, being competitive and competing and just, you know, just keeping our heads and staying in the game. For the first team selection, Oaks, he's looking to top what he did last year and do it with his teammates by his side. Honestly, just my bond with these dudes out here, try to work together to be better as a team and not give up, you know, just fight through all adversity, just not giving up, being able to stay whole as a team. If we go down, be able to keep our head in the game. Entering his fourth year, head coach J.P. Toldo said that outside of a few spots, it's been an open competition throughout the summer. We've got a lot of guys that are competing um, for the running back spot, uh, up front on the offensive line, um, and then for receiver as well. Eager to get back at it, this team has one vision. Oh, man, we won't stay. We won't stay. I'm not going to lie to you. That's all we, we're looking forward to, just trying to get to state. Win at 5 o'clock in Belvedere North at 9 and 10. That's it for sports. So we'll be right back. So he's back with one last look at our forecast. Joe, I'm loving this temperature. Mm -hmm. I know you're cooking up something yeah. good, so <laughs> keep it going, please. It was <laughs> Yeah, you know, just the way Justin Fields edged his way into the touchdown or the end zone, we edged our way into some beautiful weather, as you can see here, going into tonight pretty quiet on our interactive radar. We stay pretty quiet for 815 day, and then also Monday. Rain chances hold off until Wednesday, but thankfully, 815 day will be dry and sunny. Well, thanks, Joey, and thanks for making us mm. your home team. Have a great night. <laughs>